With the new year comes a new crop of devices to review. Hello everyone, this is Alavi from Techitron and today we're reviewing the Primo NX2. Now this is a little different from other devices within the same price range and you will find out why in a few short moments. As a new sort of packaging for their new devices and in my opinion it is certainly a change for the better because I really personally did not like the previous packaging. So with the NX2 you have some very simple branding, nothing too fancy. It looks simple and is aesthetically ple pleasing as well. And here on the back you have some of the specifications. So to remove the contents of the box you just take this tab and you pull on it here. And you simply just remove that right there. And you have your device. Now as usual, Walton puts their phone in a plastic wrap so that you don't get it messed up during transport. And let's remove this. There we go. And keep this to the side as well. They've gone for a soft material here which is backed by some plastic which is always a nice thing because it keeps your device protected. Here we have the warranty card as per with all Walton devices. And a quick start user manual. Comes in handy. Now here's where we see a different change. Walton has made compartments within the box itself where you can keep the other things. So here we have the wall adapter and over here it looks like we have the micro USB cable and some toxic silica gel just to keep everything dry and smelling nice. Here in the other compartment, you can see we have the earbuds for the headphones that are provided here. So you can just take a look at that. You have different sizes for different ear sizes and shapes, so that's always a good thing. And finally, we have the headphones here. These are the in-ear style, and they actually look a little bit fashionable, and I've tried them out myself. They're not that bad, they're pretty good. So that does it for the unboxing. Let's talk about the design and hardware of the Walton NX2. And upon first impressions, it reminded me of something that I've reviewed a while ago, and that is the Oppo Find 7. Taking a look at the back, we have a pretty simple soft touch finish over here and this obviously is removable. On top we have the circular 8 megapixel XMR R camera and right below it we have the LED flash. And this is what is the surprise over here on this device, something that I didn't expect to see. And it is a swipe based fingerprint scanner. And to be absolutely honest with you, it works very very well. On the bottom here you see we have a very large speaker grill but when we'll take off the back you will notice that the speaker unit is actually just over here and doesn't span all the way across. So this is more of an aesthetic thing. Around the sides as you can see we have this metal like trim going all the way around and continues over here and here and here and then ends here again. Now this is obviously a plastic finish but the double lined and parallel finish just makes it have a bit of an aesthetic appeal. Up front here, you can see we have a piece of plastic that just goes around the chin of the device. It has no functionality, but it's just there for the aesthetic appeal again. On top of these, we have the capacitive keys, which I think you will be able to see over here in the lighting condition. Up top over here, we have the speaker, obviously, and the front-facing camera and sensors. Now, all the buttons are placed over here on the side, and they have a bit of a metallic-like finish, and they feel a little bit mushy, but then again, it's nothing like a deal breaker or anything. On top we have another surprise which is the IR blaster if you can see here. And over here we have the 3.5mm headset jack. Now let's take off the back cover and see what the device has inside. Just so you know the nodule is right over here. Alright so at the back as we can see here there is a massive 3000 mAh removable battery. Over top here we have a slot for a regular SIM card and over here we have a space for a micro SIM card. So for those of you who have two different types of SIM cards or maybe if you're traveling abroad, this, was, this will be very very handy for you. And just over here on the top left corner we have the slot for the micro SD card. Now as I mentioned before, the speaker is on the bottom left and does not go all the way across as the grill on the back cover would suggest to you. The device is actually very lightweight and feels very comfortable in the hand. Uh, a lot of people may be concerned about the very large form factor because it does have a 5.5 inch display, but I use a Note 4 on a daily basis and this feels very comfortable to me in the hand because it is a smaller size. Although people who have smaller hands may feel some trouble or have some problems handling this device, I think it's absolutely fine, especially because the bezels are pretty thin so it's not that difficult to hold around the sides. 
For the sake of comparison, here we have it right next to the Symphony Roar A50, just so you can get an idea of how big this device actually is. Now let's keep this aside. This is actually also pretty thin and has a slight curve around over here on the back plate which makes it conform to your hand so whenever you're holding it you don't feel like you just have your hand directly on the sharp edge over here but rather it just feels and fits nicely on this curve. So that's always a good thing especially when we're trying to use this device one handed and can't involve your second hand. Given the phablet size screen people may wonder whether or not this device is a little too big but given the small bezels along with the slim build of the phone, it's actually pretty easy to handle in one hand and fits inside your pocket pretty well too. Next to has a 5.5 inch HD IPS display which means it is a 720p unit and has a pixel density of 267 pixels per inch. Now the display is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3 so even if you don't have a screen protector you shouldn't really need to worry that much about it. Now the brightness it can go pretty high and pretty low so it's decent enough to get the job done. The one thing we did note about the display is that it is very reflective which makes viewing it and actually recording it outdoors a bit difficult but it's not a deal breaker if you're using it every day. Next 2 has a 1.3 GHz quad core processor along with a GB of RAM and 8 GB of built in storage which is expandable to up to 32 GB using a micro SD card slot. We also have a Mali 400 GPU on board that powers the display. Now we're going to take a look at a game which is Modern Combat 5 and is probably the most intense game available on the Play Store. So let's see how this device performs in this type of a scenario. We also would like to mention that we're using a controller which is connected to the device using an OTG cable. Now the OTG cable is not provided in box but if you do have something like this or any other peripheral such as a keyboard or maybe even a mouse you can just hook it up with the OTG link. Now you should take notice that even though we do just have 1 gigabyte of RAM as well as a 1.3 gigahertz octa-core processor, uh, quad-core processor my bad, we can still play this game pretty fluidly, something that we haven't been able to do on previous Walton devices. Now I suspect this may be because we have a 720p display instead of a 1080p display, but there is no guarantee. So here we're playing one of our again favorite games which is Asphalt 8 and seeing how it performs on the NX2. The software experience of the NX2 is very similar to Oppo's ColorOS in the fact that they ditch the application drawer and put all the applications over here and also have a, spe have a special dedicated section for a camera widget. Over here you can just select this and take a picture directly from this tiny widget. You can also quickly access your camera gallery and videos from here. Now Walton has also made some other changes to the user interface in the sense that we have a new and improved notification drop down. Now it implies a more of a monochrome white motif and it's actually very attractive and gives you access to all your sh uh, shortcuts and toggles. Here you can see your notifications feed. Another change that they made was in the settings menu where the white motif continues and you have a sort of swiping interface but other than that the functionality remains completely identical to stock Android. One of the differentiating features of the NX2 is its inclusion of a fingerprint scanner something that is rarely or if not ever found in this price range. So as you can see we have the fingerprint lock activated and all you have to do is swipe down on this. And as long as you don't miss the sensor or swipe too fast, you ought to get the screen to activate. Another unique software addition is that of the floating window widget. Now if you don't know what that is, all you have to do is long press the back button and you'll have something like this pop up on the screen. Now you can circulate through this and if you want you can launch something such as the calculator right on top of any running applications. So let's just try this here and here we have it. So you can do calculations etc and get rid of this again. Now if you want to remove this all you have to do is press and hold the back button again and voila it's gone. 
Now, even if you don't want to continue doing that, you can just minimize this into a little toggle like this and just keep it to any edge of the screen. With the help of this floating toggle, you can do multiple things such as launch the music widget, which if you have any music here, you can play, or even launch, for example, a video widget, which will let you play your most recent video, which we have right here. Uh. Now this enables for easy multitasking, especially if you're doing something. So suppose you're maybe going through an article and you just want to watch a particular video or maybe you need to do some calculations and in that sense it is really handy and useful. Another unique feature to this device is the gestures that you can find on the off screen. So if you can just double tap the screen, it will cause it to wake with a subtle vibration. Now if you don't have any pattern or password lock enabled, you can swipe up and it will unlock the device. But since we have the fingerprint scanner enabled here, it's not going to work. As we mentioned before, the device comes with an IR blaster and along with this app called Zaza Remote, which lets you control IR capable devices. So here, we're going to try and turn on this air conditioner here using the remote application. So let's just point this at the AC and hopefully it will work. Well, we heard a beep and there we go. It works just fine. Let's move on into the camera. Now, Walton has employed an 8 megapixel XMR R sensor, which performs really good in good daylight, but it's a little lacking when it comes to low light situations. Now, as you can see here, the camera interface itself is again renewed and refreshed by Walton and follows the same white and simplistic motif. Coming here, you have easy access to all your shooting modes such as smile, self, normal, face beauty, panorama, HDR, etc. Getting out of that, there's a small toggle right here which if you can access will allow you to change certain, certain settings such as choosing the shooting mode as in night or changing the size of the picture or video or even enabling the grid. Again over here you have controls to your flash and over here if you click you can just get access to your selfie. Sliding just across can give you access quickly to your gallery. Here's a quick preview of some of the shots that we took on the camera. And if you can see, zooming in actually gives you a good bit of, de bit of detail, even though this is just an 8 megapixel sensor. The NX2 retails for 14,490 taka and has some excellent features and unique additions that make it stand out from the crowd. Aside from the design, which is actually very attractive, you get a fingerprint scanner, an IR blaster, and some unique features within the software itself. It also has Gorilla Glass 3 protection, so you don't really need to worry about handling it that much. The large screen allows you to enjoy content more and it gives you a more immersive feeling whenever you're playing games. The built-in OTG support is also very appreciated. Now, it does attract a lot of fingerprints on the front and the screen is quite a bit reflective, but none of those really are any deal breakers. You also get a 3000 mAh battery that should charge you for more than an entire day. All in all, this looks like a very good package and is something that we recommend. I used this device for 7 days and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you for watching our reviews. Stay tuned to techitron.com for more content like this. Share your comments, share your thoughts, and stay tuned.